1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today we celebrate the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica. St. John's Church was first named for our Saviour Jesus and then later for John the Baptist. So uh, uh, it's the Pope's church and it's the head church in, in the world, uh, St. John Lateran. And it was the first church to be built in Christendom. So as we celebrate, we remember that we are the church. So we gather to pray for each other. Lots of requests for prayers. Uh, Bill Lowry, recently deceased. Kenneth is having exams today. Uh, Ray Chamberlain is having surgery and a lot of people dealing with cancer and other difficulties. So we lift up in prayer all those who request a special prayer as we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries and acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for all the holy souls for whom the Divino Masses have been offered. O oh God, who from living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, Increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 47. Verses 1 through 2, 8 through 9, and 12. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the, th the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east where I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, this water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water 
comes the sea, shall be made flesh, fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm is from Psalm 46. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is our refuge, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts, the waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 9 through 11, 16, and 17. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building, according to the grace of God given to me. Like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one who is there, namely, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Be saying. Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as money changers seated there. He made a whip of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house, a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume you. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days 
I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he said raise from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Kind of on a personal note, today is my daughter's birthday, so I'm celebrating that as well as my brother-in-law. So it's kind of a great day. And it is a great day because we're celebrating the dedication of the Basilica of St. John Lateran. And this dates back, this anniversary dates back to 324. Think about that. 324, when Pope Sylvester I dedicated the Cathedral Church of Rome. It's the official church of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. But to truly understand the significance of this event, we need to put ourselves in the shoes of those early Catholic Christians in Rome. Think about it, for literally centuries, <clears throat> they were forced into hiding to worship God. They were persecuted. They were martyred for their love of God, their love of Jesus Christ. And now, now, they were able to worship, not only publicly, but in, in this immense basilica that had once been a palace. I mean, think about the joy they must have had. And that's the beginning of the physical church. As Father said, it was one of the first churches built there in Rome. And so we celebrate this day as a joyful day in the history of the church. It's a church dedicated to St. John the Baptist. It's dedicated also to St. John the Evangelist. So it's fitting that today our gospel reading comes from the gospel of John. And in John's gospel, he records four trips to Jerusalem by Jesus for religious festivals. Our reading today records this first trip of his public ministry for Passover. Passover was a feast that drew Jews to Jerusalem literally from all over the world. They were there to offer sacrifice. They were also there to pay the temple tax. Now, this presented a couple of problems. It's very difficult to travel with animals for sacrifice. The second problem was at the temple, you could not use foreign money because it often had the images of foreign rulers on them. So to address these two problems, there were people selling animals for sacrifice and money changers to turn foreign money into the acceptable shekels for the temple tax. This activity was going on in an area of the temple known as the court of the Gentiles. This was an area that was set aside for God-fearing Gentiles who, although not converts to Judaism, wished to pray to the God of the Jews. It is this, the conversion of a place of prayer into a marketplace that angered Jesus. We see this because he's, in his remarks, he talks about ma making his father's house a marketplace. Now, his anger is also directed at the Jewish leaders who were caught up in keeping the temple rituals, yet were not living up to the covenant. The court of the Gentiles was supposed to be a place of prayer. It was supposed to be a place of evangelization. By allowing it to become a marketplace, it became a symbol of Israel's spiritual dissolution. Now naturally, the Jewish leaders were not happy. You see, those who sold animals or exchanged money were licensed to do so. And so this action of Jesus was not good for business. They wanted to know by whose authority 
he was doing this. They wanted a sign. So Jesus offers them a sign that they do not understand. The temple that they will destroy is Jesus' body. That is a temple that will be raised up in three days, not the temple building they were thinking he meant. His death and resurrection becomes the sign, a sign of his authority to bring an end to animal sacrifice and to open in common with God to all nations, restoring the true meaning of the court of the Gentiles. My brothers and sisters, we need to look at Jesus' actions in terms of what it meant for worship going forward. For hundreds of years, Jews relied on animal sacrifice to atone for their sins. It was an imperfect sacrifice. A sinful man, the high priest, offered sacrifice that was not capable of bringing salvation. Jesus, in his death, offers the perfect sacrifice. His resurrection gave us the hope of our own resurrection. Jesus has established himself as the center of divine worship. Whether we celebrate in a magnificent basilica in Rome or in a simple church in past Christian Mississippi, we have the opportunity to encounter Jesus in the Eucharist. That is what the Mass is all about. That we, as simple mortal beings, through the unearned grace of God, have the opportunity to touch the divine. Amen. Let us pray for Bill, Kenneth, Ray, for all those who have asked for special prayers, for all the faithful departed. Let us present our needs in faith. We pray for the intercession of St. Joseph, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, protector of the Holy Church. They guard us in these times of turmoil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that he guide the church with wisdom and humility. Let us pray to the Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. that all bishops, priests, and deacons have the courage to speak the truth in these difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. for the quad process that it builds the church by building disciples. Let us pray to the Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. that those suffering illness will link their suffering to the redemptive suffering of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us sum up our prayer now with our traditional prayer for our deceased. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let the wretch of life shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all God faithful depart. With the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes, yes, God. God. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and granted by it, those who seek your favor may receive in the place the power of the sacrament and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift, lift up, up to the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just.
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The quote today from St. Damien on the Holy Eucharist, he said, The Eucharist is the bread that gives strength. It is at once the most eloquent proof of his love and the most powerful means of fostering his love in us. He gives himself every day so that our hearts, as burning coals, may set afire the hearts of the faithful. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Church and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other sign of peace. Peace, Lord. Peace, my spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be saved for eternal life. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant we pray that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for joy. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. In the first reading today, Ezekiel is, sh is shown a vision by an angel of a temple. His temple is a physical building. But I would like to compare Jesus Christ, our holy and unblemished temple, to Ezekiel's as we look at this passage. Ezekiel's temple had water flowing from it out to the sea and made the sea fresh. Water is a sign of cleansing and blessing. Water flowed from our Lord's side as he hung on the cross. And I can see this water flowing to touch all of our lives. The water offered cleansing and blessing to all who believed in him, making our souls fresh. Where Ezekiel's water touched trees, uh, where, excuse me, where Ezekiel's water touched Trees fl uh, flourish, supplying water, which served as food. The leaves served as medicine. What flowed from Jesus brought forth the growth of God's kingdom on earth. The fruit from Je Jesus' water offered us <clears throat> eternal life and a cleansing of our souls. This fruit is spread throughout the world today, still. And it brings us our daily bread, and it can be a means of spiritual and physical healing. Of course, Ezekiel's vision was that of a new Jerusalem, that once the people exiled in Babylon returned to Israel, God would provide for them completely. And if you think of Jesus coming to the Jewish people and all that he tried to offer them, Ezekiel's vision was accomplished. God was offering a new Jerusalem through his son, but of course, many refused to understand or even believe. Now in the second reading, Paul tells us that we are God's building. That, uh, that through the grace of God, he, Paul, has been laying a good foundation for this building. He has been preaching the good news of Jesus and encouraging everyone to believe and to follow the Messiah. But Paul knows that others will come after him and they will build on this foundation. 
Since the foundation of our faith is Jesus Christ, those who build upon it must do it wisely. There were problems in Corinth, as many were attaching themselves to individual Christian leaders instead of following the teachings of Jesus. Paul wanted the people of Corinth to know that it was not these men who had laid the foundation of the Christian faith. It was only one, Jesus Christ's foundation, which they should follow. And then Paul says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? How awesome is that? Do we ever think of that? Do we ever consider that we are temples of the Holy Spirit? Can we say that because of this, we take care of our bodies? Does what we do to and with our bodies show that we are protecting this temple of the Spirit of God? Excuse me, I'm just... <laughs> How could we possibly <coughs> abuse our bodies if we truly believe that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us? Do we respect others who are also temples of the Spirit? What would the world be like if we truly believed the words of Paul? How could we do harm to another person as we look upon him or her as a place where God dwells? Paul gives us a warning, though, that if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. Now, the majority of people do not destroy others physically, although it is a common occurrence today in our society. But we must be diligent not to destroy others' <clears throat> reputations or their means of livelihood or their hope for a future, etc. If God loves us so much that he puts his spirit to dwell in us, should we not show concern and respect for our bodies and for others? We as Catholic Christians must look upon each other as temples of the Holy Spirit. And we must protect every temple of the Spirit from the moment of conception until the moment God calls them home. Amen. Very good, Joan. We've got a cute email here. Doris Lane, Charlie's wife, invited some people to dinner. At the table, she turned to her six-year-old daughter and said, would you like to say the blessing? I wouldn't know what to say, the little girl replied. Just say what you hear mommy say, the mother said. The little girl bowed her head and said, Dear Lord, why on earth did I invite these people to dinner? <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and the kingdom of the fires of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, and trust our hearts to faithful. Grant us by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise, and that we are going to our consolation. Christ our Lord. Amen.